good day and welcome to this new interview as a part of the Boost program. My name is Rudy and uh, I will be the sidekick today yet again in this third interview on mobility coming to you from the University of Technology in Eindhoven. This Boost program is actually a specific special program for some of the startups here in the Western European region and it's funded by the EIT, Western Europe. Some of these young aspirational entrepreneurs are following these interviews and you can also join us with watching this live or maybe in the retake on YouTube. There are possibilities to ask questions as well because yet again today expert on mobility Carlo van der Weijer will conduct the interview with a new guest. After we were in contact with Amber Mobility and as well with Tom Selton of Lightyear, the solar car, you might want to look back to those interviews. Today we will have the guest coming from Belgium but working in the Netherlands for quite some time already, Christophe Vereenhoge, CEO of EV Box Group. He will tell you all about his EV solutions um, and yeah, what I said before, please feel free to interact with us by chat. For this interview, including the interaction, we've got about one hour and um, Carlo van der Weijer, fellow at the TUE, expert on mobility, sharing the same car, or actually the same type of cars, not car sharing yeah, yet yeah, between the Dutch man and the Belgium guy. A warm welcome to you again. Are you ready for this third interview? Yes, full race. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so I will be conducting the chat, so yep. yet again, if people come up with questions, I will pass them forward. Okay. Good luck. Right, so keep Thanks. Keep on coming with the questions. There, uh, there were a lot of interesting ones, so there are some clever uh, people amongst you. So uh, thanks in advance for that. But uh, welcome back. Third session indeed. Uh, we had already two sessions with startups, and it's all on behalf of startups and also try to teach other startups what's, what's important in uh, raising your company up to a multi-billion lines, beating Apple and Google and all the other ones, being the biggest company in the world. So thanks in advance for that. But yeah, what, what's the things in the beginning that are important. And we had this, I, I think already also to my point of view, very uh, inspiring sessions, the first ones. The first with Tom Selton that, that especially specifically said, of what are you going to do yourself? What do you do in partnerships? The second one we talked about the investments and how you start up financing everything. Uh, starting Hans de Penning from Amber Mobility talked about the friends, fools and families where you start with and then make the jump to these investors these big evil people that are turned out not to be so evil but had all these nasty questions. So please look back at that if you want to have some more details on that one. That's, uh, that's uh, a lot of lessons in those ones. There must be a link somewhere, probably also a uh, link to this one. But now, indeed, welcome uh, Christoph Veranoos. That's yeah. how you pronounce it in English. Pleasure. Um, we indeed we have we, we drive both drive electric of course uh, you have to experiment eight years ago I thought it was an adventure and it was an adventure but it, yeah. it's more and more comfortable thanks to the fact that there are more charging facilities and that's part of your background now you're a little bit um, with all respect uh, less junior than the former two um, <laughs> startups but that's also it's my gray hair or what <laughs> no it's your no, your um, how you say this uh, the stage of the company probably. yeah that's the stage of the company but uh, also your seniority yeah? that's okay. a positive way to look at it <laughs> like mine probably i hope but uh, the thing is that yeah we have now this charging infrastructure which makes it less at at adventure to go uh, to go driving around with your electric vehicle but yeah but you're actually in a scale-up phase. We'll talk more about that, but that's not the first startup you're starting with. You have a very long background in startups, so we hope to learn a lot from you. Yeah. But maybe it's good to give a little bit insight in your history and how you how it came to the EV Box Group. Where you're now yeah. okay. CEO. Pleasure. So my name is Christoph uh, Christoph Verinug, and uh, about seven, uh, six and a half, seven years ago, I got in touch with. Uh, um, um, actually, I was in, in the cloud software business before that and uh, tired of traveling back and forth uh, every other week to the US. So looking for, and by coincidence, I, I came in contact with uh, another software entrepreneur and we got in touch about an opportunity uh, about this Dutch company. AVBox was looking for next phase. And so long story short, acquired the majority of the shares with a, uh, a Dutch private equity uh, player. Uh, it was a, a company based outside of the, uh, Amsterdam in Almere, 18 people at that time, and a couple of million in revenue. 
We had a successful uh, install base. We were actually market leader already in the Netherlands, but those were the early days. I'm talking 2014, 2015. Um, and um, they, I mean, they started a business in the Netherlands, which I call the, EV, the Silicon Valley of EV charging worldwide. I mean, the Netherlands is the most developed country when it comes to EV charging. Mm -hmm. It's where connected uh, stations were applied in the early days, uh, in, already in public, where um, uh, smart charging was defined already before the definition of smart charging was existing. Open standards and protocols were defined. Um, but also interoperability and roaming between the different players. So, uh, small company, we started from there. I mean, only doing business in the Netherlands at that time. That time. Um, purely a Dutch player. Um, so, I had to change the team. Uh, and actually, long story short, today, there's still two people from that time. So from, from the 18. From the, from the 18. And uh, from the two people, we have actually grown the company. And if you look today, we are close to 750 worldwide uh, in six and a half years' time. Um, so we first uh, started to internationalize the business a bit in the neighboring countries, uh, started working on uh, some new hardware. Uh, we had uh, a software system that was developed by a third party um, in an old uh, language, uh, in my point of view. So we decided we're going to look for a new solution. We built a complete new generation, cloud-native architecture, uh, mm -hmm. multi-tenant, microserver-based, yep. truly scalable. That took a long time to, to actually develop it to the stage where we wanted. And so we started to grow the business. Uh, we did that in, an, in a lean and mean successful way and uh, were quickly approached uh, by some uh, major players. And I also realized that this market was really going to accelerate uh, seriously and that um, you couldn't have uh, five or ten players in each country. So um, after a while, we had a conversation with, um, with the, our shareholder, uh, private equity partner. And um, uh, long story short, um, in 2017, March 2017, so two and a half years after our journey, we, we actually decided to sell the business to NG, uh, a big uh, European uh, yep. utility. Uh, at that time, uh, managed by Isabel Corcher, the CEO, mm -hmm. uh, who truly believed in renewable, uh, but also in clean tech. And uh, we, we actually were lucky that um, she was open for an approach whereby we could stay completely independent. Uh, they would fund our, our growth that we could keep our culture, DNA, and, and with that independency, further grow the business. And uh, that's what we have done in the last uh, four years. Uh, invested a lot in R&D since then. I mean, uh, really build out R&D big time. Uh, I'll get back to that later. And, um, and yeah, in the meantime, uh, we are on a global level with 750 people yeah. and ready for our next phase. So indeed, as you mentioned, we started as a startup. Yeah. grew in a scale-up, and we are now in a phase where we're going to evolve into a scalable enterprise uh, type of uh, company. And uh, for that, we have uh, been working since a while on the next phase, and that has turned out to be uh, a phase of going public together yeah. with TPG, one of the top uh, private equity players of the U.S., uh, on uh, the New York Stock Exchange uh, later this year. And uh, at this moment, we are getting our company ready for, for that phase. So uh, that will allow us to further expand our global expansion also in North America and, and uh, invest further in, in building out this market, which is going to change rapidly because as the volume, uh, the scale is there, uh, you will see that some consolidation will happen in our industry uh, because the investments also in R&D are very high. Yeah. Uh, today about uh, 300 people uh, on the 750 are in R&D. So 300 out of yeah. yeah. And a majority of them in uh, embedded software and, and uh, application software, yeah. cloud applications. So uh, we are continuously looking to hire great, smart talent uh, on engineering okay, <laughs> and in all kinds of disciplines uh, from, I mean, whatever gender, nationality, doesn't matter. Every month people are moving from all over the world. Uh, to Almere still? To, no, to Amsterdam, Amsterdam and Rotterdam yeah. uh, to actually join us. And also we have a lab. Also, we, are, we also have a, a development team in Bordeaux and, and a lab. And uh, we're setting one up in, in Germany now. We have one in the US. So there's lab locations where we're looking for great uh, engineering development. Uh, there's, there's, there's enormous scaling up. That's, that's the reason that you, go, that you went, decided to go public? Or because you needed the investment in order to Yeah, we up, wanted or? to do, be fully funded to, uh, on one hand, uh, uh, be yeah. able to execute our own growth, orga organic growth, and still have some uh, reserve leverage uh, to do some additional investments or maybe some M&A if that might be interesting. Yeah. But, I mean, secure the the path for growth uh, in the next coming years 
um, uh, so that we can grow the company towards a profitable business. Yeah. Uh, going public has its backside as well, of course. As uh, you, you, you have to watch what you say, and even in this, but uh, did, did you never consider to uh, to just search for another capital or try to get NG to to invest more? Or that was not. Well, I think we were at a phase where I mean, um, you know, if you really want to build out a strong position in the North American market, yeah. Yeah, it's a, uh, good to have a North American shareholder. So we one. we agreed yeah. with NG to open up our shareholdership. We initially looked at a private placement, uh, but then uh, turned around into a public uh, uh, listing, which also has its indeed advantages and disadvantages. Yeah, yeah. But we're looking forward to that. I mean, with TPG, uh, we are okay. looking forward to have a great partner that can uh, support us uh, in this journey. And uh, yeah, okay, that's a that, that's that's a phase that a lot of the startups watching and uh, probably will be interested in in maybe six, seven, eight, ten years from now, <laughs> and they'll. They'll watch back on what you uh, what your considerations were back then, but maybe going back to charging because it's it's you you have 300 people in R&D. Yep. That's 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 a lot for charging. So it's far from commodity. Huh? That's, that's it's way more than just a plug. Yeah, um, that's what a lot of people say. So plug I mean, it in, ready. If you talk about charging, I mean, um, we offer we are a technology company. I mean, mm -hmm. we offer charging solutions, the technology, both the hardware and the yep. software, and then combine it with the services. So. Um, there's a lot of new cars coming to the market from all kinds of models, all kinds of brands. It's a chicken and the egg. They all have one problem. I mean, they need to be charged. Yeah. If it's a Tesla or a, yeah. a Rivian car, a truck, or, I mean, uh, an arrival van, or, I mean, a Mercedes or a Volkswagen, it doesn't matter. No. Those vehicles need to be charged. Our charging solutions charge all brands, all cars, all type of vehicles. And we have a complete range from uh, three points kilowatt to up to, I mean, 350 and beyond. Uh, the ultra fast charging solution. So we offer the AC and DC and HPC yeah. Uh, um, yeah. technology on the hardware and then also complete software to manage everything related to EV charging. Um, our hardware is software agnostic, our software is hardware agnostic, so it runs on, on different solutions. Um, and But even on the hardware, I mean, um, there is, if you look at the hardware development, also there, a large number of the people in engineering are actually working on the embedded software. So it's the yeah, embedded it's, software yeah. where the C, where the IP yeah. sits for us. That's where we have the biggest team. Uh, as we you, have, you have your own IP as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we have our embedded software team is, uh, is probably one of the biggest in the industry. Um, and uh, I mean, really, um, so that's really key. Uh, that differentiates us. Um, and then on the other hand, you have, of course, the power electronics and everything that comes with it, yeah. but also the, the platform to manage everything regarding to EV charging, the billing, the reimbursement, the, I mean, uh, the reservations, the, I mean, everything that you manage uh, is through a cloud platform to manage everything regarding EV charging in a broad escape with then APIs where you integrate with fleet uh, management system, yeah, yeah. Uh, parking systems, energy management, etc. You, you integrate with you, you have an app an, an interface with other parties then. Yeah, so we have we integrate we integrate indeed with um, yeah. with uh, two APIs and for example we have uh, uh, customers that that uh, are managing everything regarding commercial parking but they want to have their customer experience exactly. that in their own app uh, in the in, in one journey uh, without having to uh, yeah, have uh, different right. instances. So we offer that in an integrated way, completely white labeled. Uh, that fits uh, our Completely protected, so they don't can see your data and the other way around. Probably, of course, you have to protect everything. Uh, otherwise, they privacy. commoditize yeah, you. Yeah, 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 that's the, we discussed in the first uh, with Tom Selt, especially these important build or buy decisions. What what do you build yourself? Because you have a bit big uh, part of R and D, and and of course they already all are fully loaded with with, with a lot of work. Always overloaded. Always overloaded. Always and, late. And, and, and <laughs> always you have to decide, okay, yet another thing, yeah, we, sh we we rather build it because we want to keep the IP of our own rather than buy it. And like Lightyear does a lot of buy decisions and a lot of combinations with other people now with Bridgestone, etc. So they decided to go that, but they still keep focusing on certain things that one have propriety. That yeah, their but own. I mean, we, we don't uh, develop everything ourselves. Also, yeah. if you look at the software application, Evron, uh, which is branded, uh, there also we, we say, for example, fleet management solutions, that's not a core yeah. activity. Why mm -hmm. should we integrate with several uh, uh, solutions there through API so that actually our customer can make the choice which ones yes, he's exactly. using or wants to use and then uh, can uh, <coughs> pick it. And, and so indeed you have to make choices on, and, and on what you're good at and focus on that and then 
the rest, I mean, it's all about collaboration. I mean, this industry is evolving so fast. Yeah. The technology is evolving so fast that if you don't collaborate, I mean, it's not going to work. Talking about the void, that's of course interesting. Uh, the, the, the alone in the Netherlands, I, I heard we need about 180 charging points every day for the next couple of years, newly installed, and we're not heading for that. But how's, how does this market look like worldwide? What kind of numbers are we talking about? Well, I mean, it's, it's, this, those volumes are now seriously going to go up. I mean, if you see that uh, last, the last months I heard about 70,000 EVs per month were now sold in Germany. Yeah. Or 60,000, sorry. So, I mean, if you then count the number of, of charging stations that are needed, yeah. it's massive. So it's really starting to pick up. So it's all going to be, I mean, we are, that's also why we are getting out of that startup scaler phase. It's going to be about scalability. Um, I mean, uh, because you're going to have to be able to scale yeah. in the right way, uh, the right volumes at the right uh, on the right time, right quality, etc. And that's where we, as a company, are really working hard on to get ready for that scalability. Because what, what, we also what's, what's uh, the main things that you can bring? It's your whole organization. It's everything. It's end to end. Yeah. It's your. Could you advise people that's now with three people and going back to one, and then will also be 700? Where, where, what's the main thing for scalability? What's well, the thing is. Um, at the beginning, I mean, uh, I remember when we uh, started this journey, you're with a small team and you do, you're very generous and everybody does multitask. I mean, and if you see now, we are really hiring specialists. So you hire people and it's evolving. I mean, and your, your organization, your team is evolving, your management team is evolving. Not everybody can grow with the company towards the next stage. Yep, uh, sure. And you have to hire more and more dedicated specialists that can help to bring the company to the next yeah. level, professionalize. I mean, so it's about the biggest asset is, of course, the people, but then also your systems, your processes. Uh, and doing that end to end is really a difficult task. Uh, it is a, you go through pain points and, 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 and growing pains as a fast growing company. Um, and but, but, uh, but you stick, the, the, what you said before, you stick to a constant culture and huh? the DNA is not changing. Well, the, the, DNA, the culture, the DNA has, has indeed, uh, we, we worked on it hard from the beginning yeah. to make sure that we, I mean, we have, a, we have a great culture, I dare to say, a great team of people. I'm, I'm proud to say we have today uh, close to 70 nationalities. Um, I mean, average age is about 33 uh, in the company. Um, and but also i mean diversity inclusion is, is part of our culture but also we are very uh passionate about what we do we keep that entrepreneurial agility although we are growing up as a company but what is very nice in our business is that we also everybody is very purpose-driven we are making an impact i mean that's, we are okay, i mean we are in a, in, a, in, a, in an industry that is fast growing which is cool but even more important, we are helping to, to solve uh, part of climate, uh, the yeah, climate this problems. Is, this is the thing. And yeah, so you have a clear purpose. That's, there's that's environmental yeah. issues, but even more important, air pollution. I mean, air pollution is huge. Yeah. I mean, if you breathe in New Delhi every day just by walking there, you, it's the same like smoking 44 cigarettes. So, I mean, the air pollution is dramatic, and uh, we are really making a positive impact on that. Yeah. We, for example, we, we, we plant a tree for every charging station that we ship. I mean, last year we shipped over 100,000. We planted, I mean... Uh, Not in Amsterdam, I hope. No, 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 all over the world. I know we do it in, in areas that suffered from fires and, and uh, uh, less favorable neighborhoods, etc. Okay, so, so we really want to contribute and give back to society. Not, and make not, a only positive by, not, not only in writing, but really by acting. By acting, and, by doing and, and then, it. I mean, then these talented people should choose either this or to maximize the number of clicks on a certain site. That's where, where a lot of people spend their yeah. uh, talents on. Yeah. yeah. So then you rather do something with a purpose. Well, if you can do something that you give something back to society and make a positive impact okay. on the future, also to our future generations. Yeah. I mean, I'm a dad of three kids. I'm proud. I mean, we talk about it at home. I mean... And uh, yeah, I mean it's it's great if you yeah, can yeah. make a positive impact. Uh, it's a better story than uh, look look what Daddy has done. Uh, we we maximize the number of clicks on this advertisement side. Yeah. So that's 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 a better story. So you have this purpose very clearly. Yeah, that's what attracts people. It's a dry, It's a main main. Uh, it's main and that's yeah. also the good uh, basic for the culture. Yeah. And that was already when you were th with two people. No no no. We, we, we actually created it. I mean, um, it wasn't really there when we started. We I mean. Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, my, my first new hire at that time was a, a guy from Portugal uh, who didn't speak English, uh, a, a Dutch, sorry, so okay. that commuted 
um, to the Netherlands first. And so I had to change to, to English, and that was also one of the reasons why we had to transfer, transform the team a bit, because uh, not everybody was used to, to work and live in English every day in that, in that startup. Uh, but it was a reason, okay, let's move to Amsterdam, let's have an open office space, let's be able to attract young talent that can, work okay. with public, that can come to work with public uh, transport, etc. And so we have actually built that culture uh, with uh, hashtag EV Proud. We call ourselves EV Boxers. I it's see like you smiling family. while you're telling. So that's, yeah, that's, yeah, something, you're really yeah. that's, that's something you're really sincerely yeah. proud of. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. That, but changing culture is something that you cannot plan. And it's no. not that's the, from July 20th we will have this new culture. That's, yeah. that's not how it went. So you have to just push and facilitate. Is that what yeah. you did? Open Embrace culture. Embrace it. Yeah. Change yeah. language. Open. Have this purpose clearly yeah. there. Oh, that's a cool one. That's it. Oh, you had yeah. immediately yeah, the questions come in. Calling in uh, through the live chat on, uh, on YouTube, and it has to do with language as well. So you switch from Dutch to yeah. English, but this actually has to do with the software language. And if I'm correct, you did change something in the software as yeah. well about five, six years ago. And Tamur is actually asking a very specific question <laughs> Are these chargers following OCPI or OCPP? <laughs> no. So, uh, a good question. Actually, it's a good question. So, there are two different uh, type of protocols. So the OCPP is actually the connection between the charging station and uh, the backend, and then OCPI is about the, the between the different the mobility service providers, the different backends, the communication there. And so we use both standard protocols, OCPP and OCPI, and uh, an, an alternative uh, for uh, OCPI is OICP that is used uh, by a German aggregator. That is one that we don't apply. We use the the standard uh, open protocol uh, that is pushed forward from the industry, and our our software is based on an uh, open. I mean, on an on an open architecture. I mean, truly cloud native, um, uh, microserver, multi-tenant based, truly for scalability, um, and completely developed in house. So, when you thought of it, you already had scalability. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, so we had a we had a software system which was in the past built in .NET. Uh, with not the greatest UI and UX uh, that we used for a very long time. So it was good. I mean, up to maybe 100, 150,000 users, but not for the millions and tens and maybe hundreds of millions of users in the future. And then you read, I mean, many companies actually didn't change and converted their software from an, uh, a data-hosted solution, uh, from unpromised to a data-hosted solution, and it's kind of a hybrid. But if you really want to go cloud, you go cloud native, cloud native architecture. Mm -hmm. And so we had to restart from scratch without using a single line of code and build a complete new system, which is a very tough job. But I mean, uh, we, we are happy that we did it because it's going to help us in our scalability in the future. It's worth the work. And maybe yeah. if you allow me, I have another question. Yeah, maybe John remark on this because we talked about culture. You ask a technical question yeah. and he has the answer as a CEO, which is something that you also see in high tech, yeah. that, that, that even CEO is very, very technical in that knowledge but they have a passion kind of for guy. the technology yeah, you, part yeah. and the innovation. I but mean. it's probably something in the culture that the entire company then has, this passion for technology. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and indeed we are, I mean, in a fast moving environment on yeah. that level. And uh, I think in, um, yeah, if you really have to know the, the technology part uh, well, and it's, yeah, it's something I have a passion for, so it's, it's something I will do as long as possible. What did you study, by the way? I'm also an engineer from uh, background. An engineer yeah. from background, yeah. 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 It can go uh, right with engineers. So, <laughs> okay, you had another question. Uh, Definitely. So, by the same time, and it's maybe on culture as well, but not within the company. But he's really diving into your uh, in your website. So, who knows? You've got <laughs> someone who's applying for a job anytime soon. But he's actually he found. He said, "I see on the EV Box website there is a residential charger option, which can be installed in shared spaces." How does the charger avoid vandalism and letting any other people use that private charger? I don't yeah. know if that's yeah. actually an issue because out on the street, it's, you also have it's a software yeah. and a hardware issue, yes, yes, and yes, also yes, a I mean, culture on how people. No, no, but it's a combination, and yeah. it's all secured. And uh, I mean, we live with that uh, daily uh, on larger scales, also in uh, multi-unit dwelling uh, apartment condominiums, but also like Schiphol, we have hundreds of stations yeah. at Schiphol Airport. Um, so it's it's something it's it's uh, for a standard business, yeah. Yeah, so the, the hardware has to be good. It yeah. has to be somebody. And the embedded software and the hardware and yeah. the software platform all combined. Unless you, no. you you cannot break into it, you cannot no. hack it, etc. No. That's a lot of yeah. 
That's a, that's a combination of hardware and software. Yeah. But maybe co coming to this, because the, the, the market is, of course, different different uh, angles. You go from 3 kilowatt to, to what's now 350. 350 is the standard, but I mean, we can, we might go beyond. Bigger, we're going to go beyond also yeah. for now, uh, buses and trucks. At, at the home, I do not need more than uh, 11 kilowatts no. or something, and even three kilowatts for mo for most people will probably be enough for there. Sure. Yeah. Uh, that, 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 that's that's enough. But but that's now people, and I'm in the lucky situation that I have my own uh, driveway so that I can charge it over there. Now, there with the current electric vehicles, uh, the first uh, users probably have such a, uh, a driveway. But now we come to the people that do not have their own uh, surface at well, that varies is that from changing this country to country i mean if you look in the us majority of the people have i mean residential have their own driving garage um, in the netherlands it's already less if you look at for example major cities like paris and others it's all condominiums zero yeah. uh, so um, and there people i mean you see more and more uh, condominium charging in the, yeah. in the apartments uh, but also more what you're going to see more and more charging hubs you know, also in the past, the majority, so if you look at the evolution of EVs, you had a couple of full battery electrics and then you had a lot of plug-in hybrids. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm happy that that period is going away. I mean, it's going full plug-in hybrids, uh, full battery electrics because that's purely the, the, the clean car it should be. Um, and, and so also in the past, most of the cars could not charge DC yet. No. Today, all cars coming to market, can charge a uh, fast charge, a DC, uh, 80 to 100 kilowatt or more, which means that finally you see more occupation on DC charging. Yes. You're going to see more and more charging hubs in suburbs, yeah. in, in outside the city, at retail hospitality locations, at universities, whatever, where people will come by, be there. I mean, in the meantime, drink a coffee, charge, and then yeah, move right, on, right. And yeah. depending on, on your journey. Uh, so because the, I mean, the new fuel station is not a fuel station where you just get your cigarettes and a, and a quick coffee and move on, but it's probably a more relaxing thing where they, they add value by hosting you. Yeah, and, and then where you're going to do some emails or a conf yeah. call in the meantime and, and then move on. Yeah. Yeah. And, and actually also travel in a safer way that way. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, You, sh yeah. you should stop uh, for yeah. half an hour every two hours. We, we are all yeah. so rushed and, and fully on, online with communications that's non-stop. So having a short stop to do your your mail and and slacks or whatever, I mean, it yeah, makes sense. it's that it surprised yeah. me as as being uh, always in in a, in a hurry, etc. When you go to Switzerland, yeah. now I have to stop two right. times half an hour, which you just accept. You start recognizing why did I have to hurry uh, yeah. in the old days? I don't I don't can't remember anymore. Yeah. That's that's true. But but this this shifting from from home charging, which is, I think most of the kilowatt hours now will be charged at it, home. It but will it's always shifting be. To, I mean, home. A residential charging and workplace charging yeah. will stay the bulk. I mean, and workplace, you say, so that's workplace, a combination. Yeah, yeah, yeah workplace uh, as well. That's uh, those two will will stay will 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 keep on being a majority of of, of the charging where it's going to happen. But then there's still a lot of uh, people that cannot charge at work or, I or, mean, uh, or need to charge home, in yeah. different uh, environments. Yeah. Okay, that's the next. And is, is, are, are you talking different chargers then, different systems? Because the, yep. the, the reason why I ask, we also look specifically today at the technology readiness levels because you are active in all sides. The, the things that are already on the market should be uh, serviced, etc. But you're also thinking about tomorrow, what, what's going to change. Uh, for well, instance, a lot of people say but inductive charging. Why not put induction on the roads so that cars driving over it will be charged? You hear that already for tens of years we're, we're neither of us is a believer. No, it's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. No, You're no, going to be no. firm on that and one. And even inductive, what we see, we are close uh, partners with um, the major OEMs, the automakers. Okay. And uh, they have given up on inductive it's, charging. It's off yeah. the, uh, yeah. the planning, yeah. It's off uh, the planning. Also not stationary inductive. No. So, no. Uh, so the moving uh, is, is, no. Is, no. is too silly to be true. No. No. But also stationary no. is not going to happen, what you said. No. They, uh, too they, complex. They took to a different path. Um, I mean, pricing, efficiency, safety, there's many, many reasons yeah. why not doing it. Um, but indeed, I mean, what you see is that the, the, the technology is evolving. For example, we are now launching, we, we launched the last week, um, a complete new generation of DC charging, modular, a modular technology, yeah. so that actually a customer can start with a 90 kilowatt charger and then can upgrade it as there's more occupancy. He can okay. charge two cars at the same time. He can upgrade it from 90 to 240 kilowatt in steps of 30, 30. So it's really built that you can grow your business and based on more usage in, in metropolitan area or whatever, you can actually upgrade your install base, uh, yeah. charge two cars at the same time, etc. So those are things that are all evolving um, that are 
let's say the second, the third generation. I mean, and it's a it's a next phase of, of your of your technology readiness. Okay, uh, and that's yeah. that, and that's what you're asking. So it's it's more this, this scalable yeah. Uh, applications. Yeah. What else? We hear a lot about vehicle to grid and then grid to vehicle yeah. uh, charging back in order so that you can There's charge for eight cents and sell it again during the day, so that you can really balance the network as a car. That's a that's a nice. Uh, it's a dream of, of yeah, a lot yeah, of technology. I mean, it has a lot of potential. I mean, uh, because I mean, all those driving uh, batteries uh, yeah. in cars uh, will definitely have a value over time. But you also have to see that nowadays, I mean. Uh, you have the Nissan Leaf, uh, you had uh, the Renault, I mean, but for the rest, there's hardly any cars on, on a larger volume available in the market. So there is not really a, a, a big scalable commercial not model yet. yet. Okay. Is it going to come? Yes. It's going to take a number of years before it's going to get to that stage. And in the meantime, we do the R&D, we do some, some pilot projects, we learn from it. I mm -hmm. mean, it's mainly also on the software side, a lot of things uh, need to be done and developed. Um, and this will evolve and it will depend it will vary in different segments and also different current countries, but that okay. will come step by step. Will it be completely the standard commodity for everybody? No, I don't think so. No, okay. Uh, but it's something you keep on investing in. It's, yeah. it's, you, you have to get your, that's maybe a lesson for, for the well, people. I think that on the roadmap, your I mean, is on your technology roadmap, you have things that are planned to, be, to go to market or to be launched in the next 18 to 24 months. Yeah. And then you have roadmaps that are way longer, that are more focused on innovation, where you don't focus on short, medium-term revenue generation yeah. yet, but more purely developed from an innovation point of view on many topics. Yeah. And let's say from 10 uh, projects, um, a couple of them will, will make it to, towards a so real commercial So you keep success. on investing in that, although you are so busy with creating your cash cow, you have your stars. You have to continue to invest yeah, in future You have to continue uh, and not get lazy and ah, I have a cash cow because sooner or later the, you need a new cash cow. Yeah, that's maybe the lessons learned for all uh, the people at home starting their business. But at a certain moment, don't be too happy with your no. cash cow because you have to keep on innovating in the in the front line. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, um, yeah, you can never say I can sit on my ass and I'm cool and dumb. Uh, it's not going to happen. Okay. I mean, you, you have to keep on innovating. Take it from this man. So uh, keep on innovating. You raise your hand. You see. Yeah, definitely, you because oh. there's yet another question coming in, and it's yet again by Tamur. He said, "Well, I don't think I will apply for getting a job, okay. as he yet. actually is a co-founder of Charge BNB. I don't know if you have ever heard of it, but that's yeah, actually the, the, the Airbnb for yeah. your car if yeah. you're somewhere out yeah. and about and you need to find a charger. And he's asking yet another question for you, Christoph." Um, what threats does replacement of battery of EVs bring to the EV box business? Completely so, replacing batteries? Yeah, I, I, he means instead of charging an EV battery just to yep. replace it. There oh, are solutions yeah. right now, yeah. but in the upcoming three to five years. Yeah, we, yeah, we had a big startup in Amsterdam as well. This is a really company 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, better Place. So yeah, you better first, place. first, I mean, Better Place did it, Tesla did it, big Tesla scale. Did it. Uh, they both spent billion plus uh, on each and uh, it went uh, bust, it didn't work. NIO, uh, a Chinese company, is now trying it in China and is going to also test it in Norway. Um, I mean, it's not, I mean, it, it, uh, it might work for certain uh, applications, but it's not interoperable. It's, I mean, you cannot switch your battery between different cars, so it works on one model, one type, type of yeah, car, but, but should you, you have to go to the station and then change it. Uh, yeah, and, I get, and but the, the, from an economical point of view, it only works if you can really uh, leverage the different the flexibility on the market and charge those batteries at night and then uh, get a certain premium. Yeah, it's a logistical I mean, challenge as well. So but, but it, has, I not, it has not been proven as a business model to be successful so far. You said you can only within one model, but should you not try to force the models to adapt to the standard size yeah, of but, batteries I mean, like toy cars do? Like yeah, but I mean... Triple uh, A battery or... Um, I don't think that uh, Volkswagen is going to do that uh, together with uh, Tesla uh, and Mercedes-Benz the, and etc. Because the wheels I mean, and the platforms no, have to no. be the same. And actually Tesla tried it on big scale, they, they killed it. Uh, Better Place tried it and it was uh, 800 million uh, yeah. US dollar, was, uh, didn't succeed. Um, and was maybe it, also yeah, too yeah, early. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. I mean, uh, it, it leads per to definition watch. to a suboptimal car design actually, because you want to integrate the battery and settle it to optimize the sound. Yeah. Oh. And I recently and also saw weight. actually a video, yeah. so I, yeah, I guess by extra, extra weight for the yeah. carriage. Yeah. Yeah. 
in the, uh, Neo in China, I guess, that they yeah, yeah. The, were testing out such a car. And, and the owner said, well, you can borrow it for the review. You can do anything with it except for replacing the battery because right now it's still brand new. And I don't know what I get back for it. So it's yeah, still that's, the, that's yeah. the thing. You drive around with a new battery, you swap and you have an old one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can only go for 30 more. But Renault, Renault had this model that you separately yeah. leased the battery. Yeah. Yeah. It's also yeah. not a real success, no, is it? No, no, no. They stopped it, yeah. So now if you want to buy a Twizy, you have to see if it's ownership or what's the battery. You want, yeah. yeah. You Chris buy a car and you still have to pay for it per month. Yeah, yeah another uh, question comes for Samuel. And he's one of the people who is joining us. Samuel is asking in the chat as well, um, what's the balance between hardware and software? Most of the discussion has been on the software, also in terms of speed of innovation and deployment. So maybe this has to do what your company is focusing on regarding yeah. whether yeah. you put in the effort. But, I mean, as I said, um, roughly, I mean, on the 300 people, there is 200 people uh, or more, 220 in software, I mean, talking R&D. Um, but I mean, uh, equally divided on the software side, half of them are actually on the application uh, platform and the other half are embedded software. So for me, the embedded software is super, super important. Yeah. So when we talk about software, for me, it's also about the it related to hardware. Yeah. That's where the core also of our IP sits. And so um, it's, it's where the intelligence uh, is in, in the devices, how we apply smart charging and everything. And, and uh, you manage everything from there, so it's it's uh, the software in the hardware. Mm -hmm. But if you look from a revenue point of view, we make the majority of revenue with the hardware because the numbers are much higher. If you look mm -hmm. at, uh, let's say, um, the average price of a, a residential charger up to an ultra-fast charger, it goes from uh, 700 to uh, 60,000. I mean, before you, I mean, in one unit. If you before you start making that on software with um, small subscriptions on a monthly base, yeah. you need a massive. So the software cannot keep up, catch up yet with the mm -hmm. the big revenues. So the revenue, the hardware is the the driver for the revenue for now, and over time it will catch up and more and more land and expand yes. because each time we sell a piece of hardware with the attached software on a monthly base, you're going to add some recurring revenue, but it's it's growing uh, not at the same speed as you can yeah. with the numbers of the size of your hardware. Various speeds, yeah. yeah. In, in what area do you see this recurring revenue? Because yeah, you have you have your charging station, et cetera, and you, well, I mean, are you gonna make money on me with my EV box at home? Well, uh, I mean, it depends if you wanna integrate it with, with uh, your, your battery and your solar and those type of things and have reimbursement. Okay. If you have a company yeah. car and uh, you charge at home, but you want to be privately reimbursed for the energy out of your private pocket that you use to charge okay. a company car yeah. uh, and being automatically billed to your leasing company oh, or employer. Those type of things that, I mean, uh, all those transactions, I mean, there is a certain cost for that. Um, and then you pay a certain fee for it, or it's paid by your leasing company or your employer. Okay. Uh, but that's one example. If you go to a workplace and you're uh, dealing with uh, 50 or, let's say, uh, PwC in Amsterdam, 150 uh, units uh, at the office. If everybody starts, if everybody That's starts charging a full electric battery car at nine o'clock in the morning, when they put on the lights and the air computers and the air conditioning, you're going to have a problem. So you need you just need smart that's, that's, charging, that's, low balancing. Okay. You need to manage everything. You need to. I mean, so it has to be and managed. And that's all things that you can take care that, of. And that is done through through software. And there you pay a subscription for it to make yeah. sure that everything is. Uh, and also take into account what are the peak hours, I mean, how can you apply it in a smart way, more smart charging, those type of things. So there's many, when you, then you go further to fleets, I mean, fleet management, uh, integration to your fleet management system, energy management system, all those type of functionalities that are done through software. Not only software in the application, but also in the embedded, which yes. is then managing the hardware uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. devices. You touched on a point from the there, if everybody, which you hear a lot, but people saying, well, oh, we, we need to invest billions and billions in our network in order to host all these electric vehicles. Uh, what's your look on that one? Is, uh, well, I mean... Uh, because the smart charging on itself can already make sure to prevent that, that you don't start at 9 o'clock in the morning yeah, at the price of water cars. So smart charging will play an important role, but also there's more and more renewable. I mean, of course, luckily, yeah. storage becomes more, more cost-effective, affordable. So the more uh, storage we can combine with, with renewables and smart charging, uh, that will help us a lot. Um, over time, there will be more also VGI um, uh, technology coming into, into play. And so that, that yeah. will evolve and will allow us to further uh, scale up uh, massively to a, 
a zero carbon uh, fleet. Which, which you really believe it. So we have now one billion cars in the world, say. Yeah. Uh, so that's, is there a problem if they're all electric in the future? Do you see this coming? It's not going to be all electric uh, on the short term, maybe on the long, no, long term. No, it's, but it's, there's, there's no fundamental reason well, why I we mean, cannot charge there is, that. There is uh, investments needed on the infrastructure side to, to, do, yeah. uh, to, co to cover that. But that's going to take uh, decades before we are there because you also have... Okay. So the cycles, possible. the life cycles of vehicles, that takes a long time. So, I mean, you're talking decades before yeah. you're there. Yeah. And there's no fundamental problem why that should not be successful. Well, I mean, the, for, I mean, for that, there is, I mean, with, I mean, there's going to be serious investment needed to be able to to to. Yeah. to, uh, to uh, Maybe a sidestep trucks. What, what's your position on tr on trucks? Because that's also a lot of discussion. Trucks will never be electric. Now you see them coming up electric. Well, and, uh, I mean, some, some people say up to 500 kilometers will be possible. Yeah, it's going fast. I mean, and yeah. the evolution is really positive. We, uh, you can see, I mean, uh, we announced uh, a partnership with Scania throughout yeah. Europe uh, for buses and trucks. Uh, shortly, we'll announce also another major uh, player that will uh, team up with us. Um, so it's, it's, that market is evolving. And, um, yeah, I mean, the truck business is, uh, the truck business is definitely uh, changing. Yeah. And also buses. I mean, I think the time that we have, that we are installing new diesel buses in, in cities and municipalities, that's, that's already that's over. Nobody wants to smell that type of polluted air anymore. No, and it's, it's, it's yeah. the noise, it's exactly yeah. why you don't yeah. want, the, yeah. want all those kind yeah. of things, yeah. So uh, I don't think there are any diesel buses, a lot of them sold uh, anymore. So we, we got that market already. Yeah. Now flying is the only one that's uh, left over, but we're, a, we're starting electric one. flying as I'm well. I'm not going to speak about that one. Uh -huh. no, okay, that's, that's maybe the next one, but uh, yeah. maybe small planes. Yeah. A new one, did you, did you get a sign on it? Uh, not yet, but not if, yet. If, if someone uh, then, can hear us in the... In the no, I thought, I thought you gave me a, a sign, but uh, maybe, maybe come back to what we already had with this investment price. That's a lot of interest all for startups. Uh, Hans Depending said it's so beautiful that we start with family, fools and friends. You get some money of them, and then you can offer some to this next phase. Now you, had, you, you experienced this a few times, and now you're even preparing IPO, which is a lot of lessons learned from that as well. Um, how, how did you come from this first, your own budget, and maybe investing your own bit of money and some friends, etc., to your first investments? What, what reminds I've you? I've had uh, several startups uh, yeah. where I invested myself, and then you raise some, uh, indeed, uh, um, friends and fools uh, type of money yeah. at the beginning, and then they're uh, still friends. Go, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, and then uh, you you go uh, to more more professional investors, but also then between the different VCs, uh, you have business angels, and then you go to venture capital, and then you go to private equity, and then you go to uh, towards the super league of private equity, like the TPGs of this world. Uh, so it's a, there is a big a big difference and in, in involvement. I mean, what is nice about, uh, for example, <coughs> EVOX, uh, the company got started by two founders uh, that were uh, successful before. They actually started in a very lean and mean, outsourced everything that they could, uh, as less people on the payroll as okay. possible. And they also agreed that for the first three years they wouldn't take a penny of, of salary out of it. Uh, and that allowed them to be profitable as of the first year. I mean. Um, so they really were not taking any any uh, euro cent of salary. Uh, let the company breathe and grow. I mean, uh, and do it. So they did it in a very lean and mean way, in a very successful way. So big respect for that. Um, and and it was one of the only companies being profitable already in that in the early years yeah. in that technology. I mean, there but were not many full companies. Full on the outsource. Mm, well, they were. They were I mean, yeah. uh, at that time, indeed, yeah. outsourcing everything that they could. Yeah. Um, that's how they got started, but then you, you can do it to a certain time, but then uh, at a certain moment we had to pull in uh, development and, and get more and more in-house and then you start to develop more and more IP and, 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 and it's, it's changing. Yeah, yeah. so this is, this, is, this is maybe a phase that you start with outsourcing and at a certain moment trying to yeah, insource more. Try to start more more. As, uh, as lean and mean as possible, yeah. uh, making sure that you always have a, always have a bandwidth of 18 months of... Uh, Running cash. Okay, Eight, uh, eighteen months for running well, cash. That's I mean, yeah. I mean, rule of thumb. If you if you have to negotiate and you are squeezed in a corner, you need it next quarter or next month. I mean, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So get get the eighteen. Oh, we we got the technology. Not everybody fixed. has a luxury, but I mean, 
if you can, uh, if true, you can yeah. plan that long, I mean, it, it's always better. Yeah, that's what, what also Hans said. It's, it's, it's people that are very tough and hard with questions, etc. But uh, don't fear them too much, because otherwise you give away too much. But, uh, but yeah, I think that's 18 months is a good, yeah. Yeah, comf comfortable position to start negotiating, to have this 18 month yeah. uh, frame. Do, do we have technology back? I yes. Just, uh, so and thank you for that. Uh, if I'm correct, Samuel is also Samuel back. Samuel is still there. And having yet a new question, let's try ah, whether Samuel. we can do it live, Samuel. We can see you. And here you can you. try. Ah, can you hear me this time, Rob? Yes. Yep. Yes. Super. Uh, I think there was a, a, a lot of interesting discussions going on and what's going down the investor. I think the other part that was very interesting and I wanted to kind of get your idea on, on the supply chain and partners and manufacturing. So the first question was, was around hardware, but also in the beginning, let's say, when you start negotiating or having contracts, how, how do you work partnerships? How do you choose, let's say, the manufacturing partners for you? And in the beginning, how do you get them to take you seriously? And then when you're at the stage where you are now, um, how do you get them to scale at the same kind of pace that is necessary for you to meet your goals, right? Or, and are those the same partnerships? So how, kind of that journey of going from doing two, uh, two charging uh, locations to, let's say, 100,000, right? Yeah. So um, if I look back to the history of the company, it uh, started with um, uh, working with some local partners that you trust and that you can build something up with and, and, and you cannot invest a lot of money in the development so you agree that they do that and they can uh, get a share on, on each piece. So um, it's calculated, the development engineering is calculated in the piece price and, and so the more you sell the more yep. you can make. Yep. That works at, 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 until a certain level. I mean, uh, uh, once you start to become more successful, you're going to pay more and more. Um, so, I mean, that's how the company got started um, with um, smaller local suppliers. And we have been successful with that for a long time. And then started to develop more and more in-house. But then as volumes go up, quality expectations are increasing, etc. Uh, it becomes also more uh, complex type of productions. Yeah. We actually, um, after a number of years, we decided, and, and that's not too long ago, to change from local or national, uh, we had a couple of suppliers in the Netherlands, we moved it towards um, big contract manufacturers, top tier one contract manufacturers. One of them is known, it's uh, Jabil, they have I think 100 plants worldwide, employ, I don't know, 150, 200,000 people, top class tier one assembly. So, and they are, those type of companies are now doing uh, the contract manufacturing for us on the AC side whereby on the DC uh, fast charging stations, yeah. uh, way more complex, high added value, different type of uh, solutions. Yeah. Uh, we do the assembly in-house. In -house, yeah. uh, we have okay. a plant in Bordeaux, we have one in Libertyville, Illinois in the US. Um, and uh, we do that uh, in-house. In yeah. So, oh, so you have your own plants, but that's, yeah. that's, but uh, that's for the DC assembly. side, yeah, to assemble yeah. Uh, that. Uh, on the AC side, uh, it's, it's it's large volume, um, and we do we do not make the investments in our own plants there because you cannot uh, get the full uh, no, uh, utilization of your investment. Uh, maybe also on the DC side that could evolve over time to be defined. I mean, we will continuously look what is the best option, uh, make yeah. or buy. I mean, it's a it's a, an exercise that never stops. But you're not planning to have big factories with chimneys? Uh, no, we'd rather call it, I mean, we'd rather go for more micro type of factories. Yeah. I mean, where you produce more lash, national, I mean, in a big region. You yeah. could say Dach and, and UK and France or whatever. Um, like if you take now uh, Brexit into account, it might make sense to have a, a certain assembly in the UK to get more flexibility. Oh, uh, Brexit can also lead to more factories in the UK then. Well, okay. I mean, or I mean, if you see how much the market in DAG is going to grow if you produce locally, it could yeah. be a potential benefit. I mean, to be defined, we, we, we don't know yet. Okay. So th these are the constant struggles that probably startups also come with. But, but I like what you say that, you, that, that, that the two guys start with, with, with uh, actually outsourcing a lot and separately you, you start insourcing at the moment. That can change during the game. It can be part it of a solution. I mean, the uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, cool. So, um, if you, if you look at the, the charging, we, we we discussed the future. You have maybe the the, the vehicle to grid and the grid to vehicle and, uh, and all these kind of dreams of induction charging. That's a little bit too far ahead. But you keep on constantly looking for for this this future. In the future where in 50 years from now all the cars are electric, autonomous, 
They're all autonomous, yeah, that's... Oh, uh, I believe so. Is there 50 any, years from now... Mm, is I there guess. any... Rela yeah, I, I, okay, that's... Uh, whether they still have drivers is another question, but okay, but, but they will be for the biggest part autonomous, yeah. Um, but, but is there any overlap between autonomy and charging? Maybe that you can send out your car to charge somewhere else but cheaper, or what do you see as a, yeah, as a potential or, or, I mean, overlap? I mean, uh, I mean it's, it's going to... Let's say when you park, when you don't drive, that's the first moment where autonomous... Uh, Parking is going to happen, and then uh, maybe uh, in one way or another, also automated uh, yeah. charging, and and uh, that makes sense because you can stop at the parking uh, yeah. uh, building and step out, and your car is going to park them itself. Park I mean, plug in it's its already possible today. I mean, parking in in uh, yeah. is is already in an autonomous way is already absolutely possible. That's brilliant. You don't have to open the doors. So you need less space, etc. Yeah. But it can also plug in itself then. Yeah. Well, you don't need inductive charging. Or whatever, or whatever. We'll yeah. yeah, that's a little bit... Uh, but yeah, okay, but in 50 years, everything is electrical. Are there some new things on charging area that, that might pop up? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's not hydrogen, do you think? Um, hydrogen will play a role. Um, I don't believe it will be uh, big in vehicles. Um, no. um, um, it might have in certain um, transportation a role like very heavy um, uh, earth moving yeah, exactly. equipment, excavators, those kind of things. Um, yeah, but some boats, ferries, there makes sense. But people are claiming that electric gravel is just temporary because hydrogen is going to replace it and also make you... Uh, I mean, if you see how much investments are going on in the infrastructure, yeah. I mean, and then uh, taking, pulling it out of the ground and changed again. I mean, and also you have to know that, I mean, um, the cost of a hydrogen station compared to a charging station is... Huge. Yeah, you said the maximum was sixty thousand for uh, for, I mean, a, for a DC. Yeah, uh, but you start with a simple one in public uh, in the city know. for uh, five six thousand, and hydrogen station is it's, it's massive. Yeah. And and then also yeah. the danger. I mean, ask in North Korea what they're doing with hydrogen. I mean, uh, it's something that can explode. I'll ask the next uh, next next time Kim Jong Un is here, so I'll ask him. That's the fourth uh, startup guy that we have here, mm -hmm. maybe. No, I mean it's a, no, it has, it's it not going to it's not going to replace, but it has yeah. a different purpose, and that's not going to replace your your industry for sure. No, no. so you uh, you have a, you have a bright future for sure uh, there, and 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 the balance between the new stuff that's coming on, which you keep on focusing on, that's something that I did kept from the discussion. Keep on focusing on this new, especially when you're in the midst of a very big success. Keep on investing in the new one. Yeah, don't don't keep sitting on. Uh, any questions from? Uh, yeah. Then? Okay. Once more by Tamur, I, I guess it comes from Norway because I googled charge beam really quickly and he's asking it's not about the content on what you're doing but more the approach to business and maybe we can use this seniority right now to answer this very <laughs> question by Tamur, he's listening through YouTube. Sure. What would you recommend for someone who is working on their startup part-time and want to play a little safe while continuing their day job and work on their ID ah. part-time. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm an entrepreneur, and so um, if you're an entrepreneur, then you go for it full, I mean, 100%. You have to focus and go fully for it. Um, so being safe um, and then trying to be an entrepreneur at the same time, personally, I don't believe in the concept because you need to focus and you're gonna, you need to go fully ahead for it. And you cannot, I mean... Uh, yeah, if you want to really be safe, uh, work for the government, but then don't be an entrepreneur. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's a bit of a bias here because we invited I mean, a successful entrepreneur. You don't hear so much from the non-successful entrepreneurs, but you... No, but you cannot, yeah, I mean, a, it's, it's, you need to make choices and focus, be a focus, focus and go full, full speed ahead. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you have the passion, go for it. And dare to take the risk. And uh, I mean, uh, failure is an option. I mean, I also had one uh, less successful uh, venture I'm not uh, embarrassed about it. I'm proud about it. I mean, I learned a lot from it. So it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. Well, I, I, I hope it will hit home mm -hmm. in Norway, your yeah. answer, through the live stream. And there's good Thanks. social ba back, uh, backings, yeah. backings in Norway, so you will not die from hunger probably in, uh, yeah. in such a country. And a lot of electric vehicles over there as well. Yeah, so absolutely. It's a good market to start over there. Are, are you there? In, yeah, you, yeah, of yeah, course, yeah, probably yeah, in, in, yeah. in Norway as well. We have a team in Norway. Yeah. Are, what, what's happening in developing countries at this moment? Because they, they, can they leapfrog, so just skip the entire internal combustion engine and immediately start up with? Well, the, what we see, I mean, the advantage, it depends where. I mean, uh, if you have a lot of renewable, then it makes sense. I mean, uh, solar, 
um, yeah. and, and when there's the sun is there. Yeah. What we see, for example, now is that uh, in Latin America, it's really taking off, especially on the public uh, transport side. You see that those countries are really moving towards uh, electrifying yeah. their bus fleet, yeah, uh, right. which is a great, uh, a great step forward. Uh, sometimes faster than uh, than uh, locally here in Europe or, or in the US. Yes, true. So I think that's that's a great. Uh, I mean, and it's a must. I mean, you really yeah. have to take action. I mean, uh, <coughs> we all have experienced during the COVID lockdown last year how great it is to to smell clean air and and see a blue sky. I mean, we really cannot wait anymore. It's action time for action now. Yeah. And stop polluting and and driving around with combustion engines. Uh, so we should do it all over the world. Yeah, and the, the thing is that it will be cheaper and better to drive like yeah. really soon. So yeah. the Stone Age didn't end because we had a lack of stones. Huh? There yeah. was a better alternative. So uh, <laughs> ho hopefully this is going to happen as well. I, I, I see we are at, at the end, so we should uh, stick to the, to the timing. Maybe, maybe my last question is that you had all these startups, etc. And I see you every now and then smiling at some things when it concerns technology or the culture of the company. but. Looking back in this career with a lot of successful startups, and maybe one that you even look back positively on the one that was not so successful, but what would you give as a super tip to all these people just being uh, in front of this, this 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 huge future that they all have? What, what? You know, I mean, what what um, gives me the most joy is to to also make other people successful and and see people grow. I mean, uh, if you can do that as an entrepreneur and build a yeah. company and make other people evolve and develop themselves. It is fantastic. Um, now, on top of that, the fact that we can also give back to society and we plant a tree for every charging station is, is great that you can make a positive impact. But I would say, as a, I mean, even as an entrepreneur, employer, or a real entrepreneur, I mean, whatever, it can be inside the company, outside. Um, go for it. I mean, never give up. Uh, persistence. I mean, and, and try to focus. I mean, um, it's possible. I mean, um, Go after your goal and 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 keep. It's work, it's hard work. I mean, it doesn't hard come work. on a silver plate. But uh, and also teamwork. I mean, together with a team, you can build fantastic yeah. result. Okay, it's but uh, that, very rewarding. It's it's very rewarding. But 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 have this goal. It's something that we also from the other ones. You have a sincere belief in a certain goal that makes everything a little bit better and yeah. and share that with the people. And then you don't know, need to steer them so closely. The glass anymore. is always half full, and uh, you should think. Uh, Keep on thinking positive. I mean, yeah. uh, even after the biggest issue you had, uh, think positive. That's the glass is half full, never yeah. half yeah. empty. And again, be fuller. Yeah. A lot of people say the glass is twice too big, no. but uh, <laughs> but but that you, you want to grow, so yeah. we'll leave some space at the yeah. upside there. Yeah. Okay, I focus on. Thanks very much for having me. I'll give the word back to Vidi, but uh, it was an honor talking to you, and uh, we'll, we'll continue it here. Sorry that we can't share that with you, but uh, we'll hear more from you uh, certainly in the future. Thanks. Thank you. Keep pleasure. up the good work. Excellent, Thanks. indeed. Yes, um, well, we're going to wrap it up over here. Thanks so much for joining us once more, whether it being through YouTube or maybe when you were in the MS Teams in the special program, program of the mobility program. Um, this was the interview, interview with Christoph Ver Ogen, if I, if I may say so in Dutch, the CEO of EV Box Group. If you'd like to see the other ones, please follow the links surrounding this very footage. And next time, June 15, we will be here with our latest and fourth interview, also being conducted by uh, Carlo van der Weijer, and that will be with Yuri Steinboog. Mm -hmm. He's uh, a rather young entrepreneurial guy, and he works on modular uh, robots, also for drones. So okay. that's going to be interesting and a whole new field of mobility yet again. My name is Rudy and it was a pleasure being here once more. Hope to see you next month. Good day.